Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I'm uh, continuing my experiments with the Type 43 cores that I bought. Um, these are FT140-43s, meaning they're 1.4 inches uh, in diameter, and the mix is Type 43. Greater permeability, denser core, and uh, we did some experiments uh, with the 4 to 1 ballon, winding one with that, and uh, trying it out on a folded dipole that I made for 20 meters. And we did some scans, you know, you saw that in the previous video. And it, what it's beginning to look like is the Type 43 cores are better for lower frequencies. Um, 20 meter bands kind of in the middle between that and the Type 2 cores. So 20 meters and down to 160 meters, it looks like the Type 43 cores are a little bit better. Uh, at least in the 4 to 1 balance. But what about in an un un? Uh, on the outside of my RV, I have a weatherproof box. And inside that box, I have a 9 to 1 un un feeding, uh, with, with a coax run back here to the desk, feeding a, a couple of uh, bolts and wing nuts on top. One is the ground side, which is a counterpoise wire down the roof of the RV. The other side is for hooking up uh, end fed wires um, or any other variety of, of uh, antenna that you might feed with a 9 to 1. Uh, the bottom of that weatherproof box has an SO239 with a separate run back here to the desk so I can hook up coaxial fed antennas like dipoles and such. So that gives me two runs to the outside. Well, the 9 to 1 that's in that box, it's wound on type 2 cores. And I wound that back in October uh, when I was building out the RV, um, October of last year, uh, or 2018, uh, before I hit the road. And it's worked pretty well. Um, I've used it quite a bit. I've fed uh, end fed wires up into trees. Um, I've fed uh, uh, vertical uh, end fed uh, configurations in that PVC cup back there. You know, I have an, a telescoping mast and I put a bracket on it where I could put the chameleon whips on there as well and feed those with that nine to one. So I have a real good idea of how that performs and behaves. And I thought we'd go ahead and wind a nine to one with the uh, Type 43 cores, and we'll see uh, how they're different. And uh, this is uh, the one that I just wound here, and it's a pretty standard, get it in frame, pretty standard 9 to 1. I've got it hooked up to the VNA here, and I have a load resistor that I just made up. I went to go through my uh, pile of resistors to find uh, a couple that worked out right. As you know, a 9 to 1, it uh, well, 50 times 9 is uh, 450, so it's going to translate 450 ohm impedance down to 50 ohms. So these are carbon resistors, non-inductive, and uh, if we put it on the meter... Yep. Alright, well, I'll just, I'll just hold it on there. I managed to find two resistors that together 451 ohms. That's pretty darn close. <laughs> All right. So, I have the uh, mini VNA hooked up to the 9 to 1, and I'm going to clip this resistor on. This is the output wire here. And if you want to know how to wind a 9 to 1, I already have a video on that. Um, if you just search for my call sign in um, un un, U N U N, you'll see a video for how to wind a 9 to 1 un un. All right, so we're set up to test. I've got the VNA hooked up, and I'm going to scan the entire HF spectrum. Scanning, and okay, okay, not bad, not bad at all. We're scanning from 1 megahertz up to 33 megahertz. So, as I expected, at the lower frequencies, it's better. Um, I'll let me snapshot this screen. We'll throw it up on your screen. There we go. All right, so uh, the bottom of the screen is frequency. Uh, the cyan trace is impedance. The numbers on the right show impedance. Uh, the yellow trace is SWR. And we can see right down at 1 megahertz, we are seeing 50 ohms impedance. And somewhere around 11 megahertz, it's beginning to drop off, and the SWR starts to come up. 
And uh, by the time we get up to uh, over 32 megahertz, our impedance is down to somewhere around uh, 40 ohms, 30, somewhere between 35 and 40 ohms. So uh, it's still usable. Um, it looks like, uh, as I saw previously, the Type 43 cores seem to be better at the lower frequencies. But I think overall this is going to be better than what I have presently in my external antenna box. Pardon the noise, it is raining. <laughs> it is storming here today. I, I took all the antennas down last night. I went out this morning and uh, did a little panoramic view of the uh, storms. And uh, they have reached us. So anyway, um, that's the Type 43 core. Now I'm going to go and uh, pull my uh, Type 2 core 9 to 1 out of my external box and we'll scan it and see how they compare. And I might end up putting this up in my external box because I usually use the 9 to 1 connection for longer wire antennas for the lower bands. So this I think will work better, but uh, we need to scan the one that's up there and see how it looks. So let's do that. So here is the old Type 2 that I had out in my uh, external antenna box. It's a 9 to 1 on un wound on a Type 2 core. And I was just getting ready to scan it with the uh, VNA to compare against the scans that I did on the uh, one with the Type 43 core. Here's my 450 ohm, well, 451 ohm carbon resistor. So we'll click that from the ground to this little output wire here. There we go. 450 ohm load. And we'll load the VNA software and we'll see how this looks over the HF spectrum. Okay, we're set for HF. 1 through 33 megahertz. Run. Okay, yeah. Um, well... That's interesting. It doesn't look like it settles down uh, until we get to about 11 megahertz. I need to snapshot this screen and I'll put it up on your screen here. And uh, as we can see, the SWR is uh, way up at the bottom of the spectrum. Impedance comes up to about 50 ohms, somewhere around 9.5, 10 megahertz. And then just sort of hovers just above 50 ohms, but the SWR doesn't come down below 1.5 to 1 until we get above uh, 16 megahertz. So this is definitely not doing great for the lower bands with the Type 2. It's kind of looking to me like uh, Type 2 cores are good for the higher frequencies, you know, um, 20 meters and up. And the Type 43 cores are good for... Um, uh, the lower frequencies, uh, you know, 20 meters and down. And I'm leaning on the uh, uh, Utah SDR uh, quite heavily this morning just because it's easier, but I'll try to give uh, signal reports on the rest uh, as we move from the net. So, let check in. Come now with your call. Kilo 9, Bravo Romeo Delta. W7 cold up. Kilo Bravo 9, Romeo Lima Whiskey, Portable 7. Yeah, good morning. This is KB9RLW Stroke 7 out in Kingman, Arizona in the desert in the RV uh, running about 50 watts this morning into a modified antenna. I uh, rewound the 9 to 1 on my end fed using a Type 43 core and I'm testing it out and it seems to be working better on frequencies uh, below 20 meters. 
Uh, so uh, anyway, I'm glad you could hear me. I've got you about an S3 to S4, the net control that is, um, and I'm hearing everybody else pretty well as, as well. Aside from the static crashes from the uh, ever persistent storms, and we had uh, rain off and on yesterday in the late afternoon, which looks to be the uh, pattern out here during monsoon. Sunny mornings, uh, hot days, and then uh, rain starts uh, somewhere around 3 or 4 in the afternoon. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's it here uh, from the desert. Uh, this is KB9RLW Portable 7, back to net. All right, Kevin, thank you. Uh, I'm in Sparks, Nevada, as uh, you, if you don't know, and I'm not on the radio. Ever, uh, on uh, Utah SDR, you're about a 5.8, so uh, very good to get a good audio. Your antenna's working. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm not hearing you on direct, probably just propagation, but uh, thanks for checking in, Kevin. Good to hear you. Uh, Dan, take it away. Can you uh, so, you know, I've been playing around with it for the past few days. Um, it's not as clear and defined of a difference in performance as I saw with the 4 to 1 Valon, but it does seem to follow the tr what I'm noticing in that the Type 43 cores seem to work better at lower frequencies. Uh, I did some shortwave listening last night. I wish I'd filmed it, um, but uh, definitely when I got down below um, 7 megahertz, uh, the signals were a lot stronger than I've seen previously with the uh, Type 2 9 to 1 in there. And when I got down to the AM broadcast band, it was crazy. Um, every single channel slot had multiple stations, and they were all coming in 10 to 20 over S9. It was booming in. I've, I haven't seen that strong of uh, signals on the AM broadcast band before. So it definitely looks like the Type 43 cores, um, if you're going to wind a 9 to 1 for an antenna, that's going to be primarily used on the lower frequency bands, 20 meters and down to 160 meters, the Type 43 might be the core to go for. If you're going to be building an antenna that's using a 9 to 1 that's going to be used primarily on the upper bands, 20 meters and up to 10 meters, or 6 even, uh, then the Type 2 cores might be the best way to go. Now you do get coverage across the whole spectrum with both types, I just think that the Type 2's perform a little better at frequencies above 14 megahertz, uh, at least from my experiments. So yeah, there we go. I'm, I think I'm done playing around with the un, -un for now. Um, I've got other things I want to do. Uh, for example, I got a bunch of thick film resistors in. These are 400 ohm thick film resistors. They're rated at 20 watts. And what I want to do is I want to build a folded dipole that's terminated. <laughs> When I built the uh, 40 meter folded dipole, I had a lot of comments from people saying that the folded dipole should have a terminating resistor on the far end. Well, that's a different antenna. That's a terminated folded dipole. And it has one big advantage, one small disadvantage, and probably some different characteristics. So I'm going to be doing that next, I think. I'm going to turn the 40 meter folded dipole into a terminated folded dipole and give it a real good look, um, play around with it and evaluate it. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've been wanting to get away from antenna videos for a little while, but I'm having fun experimenting, so I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to some other subjects. Uh, I want to do more Linux stuff and, and all that, but uh, anyway, enough babble. Um, so there you go, the 9 to 1, as I said, Type 43 cores are better for the lower frequency ranges. Type 2 cores seem to be better for the higher frequency ranges. Overall performance between the two, pretty close a little bit better on the Type 43s with the lower bands. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.